Welcome to the Biblical Entrepreneurship Seminar. We're going to talk about developing a growth culture. I'm Patrice again. I'll be the instructor for this particular seminar. Um, let us pray. Father, thank you so much for your presence in our midst. Thank you for all those around the world who, have, who are participating in this seminar. Lord, we pray that you would, by your spirit, minister to each and every person to help their businesses go to another level. We thank you for the opportunity, God, to serve them. We pray, Father, for the technology that you would uh, work it out so that all things does work together for your good. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, I'm going to do a few introductions, just kind of tell you about myself, and I'll t we also give you a quick introduction of uh, who we are as a ministry, and then we'll get into our seminar. At the end, I'm going to give you an overview of the uh, biblical entrepreneurship so that if you've have not had a chance to participate in it, that you might be encouraged to do so. And we have a special for you today. So don't stick around before the seminar is over, just in case you want to be a part of our of today's special. I, I assure you that you will enjoy today's special. If you don't know who I am, I'm Patrice Saget. I'm a business trainer and entrepreneur. I speak uh, all over the world and I'm also a preacher, I've written several books. I coach several companies around the United States and other parts of the world. I especially specialize in helping uh, family businesses uh, go from profitability through succession in, in line with their, their values. Uh, I also serve as Chief Sermon Officer of the Neymar Project and Kingdom Business Coaching, which is our sister coaching arm. I've uh, trained about 7,000 entrepreneurs and coach around the world and done several, and after several books. By the way, if you not yet, don't yet subscribe to uh, my podcast, I have a weekly podcast called Marketplace, Biblical Entrepreneurship Marketplace, where I interview uh, key thought leaders and entrepreneurs and kingdom business, uh, kingdom business owners from all over the world. Wherever I go around the world, I, I do uh, various interviews and you don't want to miss it. So you want to go to our website, get more information on that and also subscribe to it. It's free of charge. And I also have a Kingdom Business Coaching podcast called the Three Keys Podcast. You also want to take, take a look at that as well. Uh, we also feature a podcast called Purpose and Profitability that my good friend um, Robert Fakui uh, hosts. So if you want to check out those podcasts, you can see all that on our website. If you are interested in any of the resources that I've published, you can um, go to our website and go, or go to our bookstore and you can find that online. Well. NEMA Project mission is to build kingdom businesses globally. Uh, we do it in about 22 countries around the world. Uh, we actually have active presence in about uh, 11 countries with offices in, in Mexico and in Malaysia for the Asia market as well. So wherever you are, we might be able to serve you there locally, but if not, we can definitely serve you virtually. Our mission is to build kingdom businesses globally. And uh, we do that through training, coaching, and access to capital. Uh, we provide proprietary training uh, for entrepreneurs like yourself and those who are looking to expand their businesses or start. We also come alongside those entrepreneurs and coach them in growing their businesses. And for those who need capital, we connect them through our Global Kingdom uh, network uh, to with investors. So far, we raised about $1.5 million for companies. And we also have an entrepreneurship community where you can be a member and co collaborate with entrepreneurs from around the world. Well, <clears throat> before we get into our seminar, uh, we always like to start with going over the business life cycle. And by the way, today's special, and I'll tell you about it, you're gonna get a chance if you desire, I'm gonna tell you how you can get access to this, to, this, to the full, um, to what we call the Kingdom Business Life Cycle Guide, which is a guide going over what I'm about to go over with you now but with a lot more information so that you can assess which, uh, what stage of the business you're in. So we've identified several stages of, of business uh, and, and discovery is where you are conceiving an idea or thinking about starting a business, not sure what you wanna do. Startup, where you, um, you've launched the business, but you not, have not yet broken even, break even, is where you have uh, your you're operating revenue equals your expenses. So you're making enough to cover your expenses. You're no longer going into your own pocket to 
operate your business. And by the way, uh, we teach that uh, we we teach that black brick even must be on a cash basis and not accrual. Profitability, where you have a margin, a competitive or in in line with your industry standard, uh, that you're able to um, uh, create margins for your business. And as you will learn, we take our training or even when you read the guide, that stage is a great stage, profitability, but it also could be a very dangerous stage because that's when most businesses either um, start going, stay in that they don't go beyond that or they go backwards or in some cases, unfortunately, they fail before they get there. By the way, 80% of businesses fail in this stage and out of those left, I'm sorry, 50% fail in this station in the first five years. And out of those who are left, 80% fail right here, right? Because they don't know how to handle the stage. Well, if you can handle that stage, the next stage is sustainability. And that's the stage where you are able to build systems and, and have the right people in place in the right positions. Is where Jim Collins, Jim Collin, an American uh, business author, and leadership guy says that you are now working on the business versus in the business, right? You can walk away from business, provide vision and strategy and have others manage it. It's a great place to be. By the way, this is the sweet spot here, sustainability. And then the next space there is scalability. This is the stage where you can expand regionally, nationally or internationally. And beyond that, it is succession where you can pass the business to the next generation. We believe that a kingdom business must be built to withstand at least three generation. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, a righteous man leaves inheritance for his children's children. You know, and so we want to make sure that you're able to get the guidance you need, the training and coaching and support you need to move your business from wherever you are all the way to the next generation, meaning either to be able to sell it to your employees, to your, to your family members, or to a third party, okay? So here's a question for you. Where is your business in these stages? No matter where you are, hopefully today's seminar will help you uh, move from one stage to the other. And by the way, at the end of the seminar, I'm gonna give you a way to access an entire guide on how to think through each of these stage, and I'll tell you how you can access it, free of charge, by the way. All right, let's talk about developing a growth culture. Now, <clears throat> this particular seminar is part of what we call a growth series, which is a series of, of seminars that we do around business growth. And so uh, developing a growth culture has to do with how do you create within your company a, an environment conducive for growth? right how do you create an environment that is that is healthy that is poised for increase uh, where ideas are valued and and they germinate they grow an environment where innovation prevails right an environment that is that is not only healthy uh, but poised for development increase. That's what we call a growth culture. It's a business environment that is poised for increase, that is healthy, and that, that, that drives production, right? But the ones that felt on good ground are those who having heard the word with a noble and a good heart, keep it and bear fruit. And so really we talk about an environment whereby it's conducive for growth where fruits, where good fruits are born. An environment where when an idea comes down and where in an environment where an idea is, is nurtured and developed, it prevails. That's the kind of culture we are talking about good ground. So how do you create a business environment where there's good ground, all right? And so that's what we're gonna talk about, uh, which is Matthew chapter 13, verse eight, by the Matthew 13, verse eight. How do you create an environment where there's good ground? 
okay, where when ideas come, when innovation come, and things are able to multiply some 60, uh, some, some 100, and some 30. So I'm going to give you eight basic principles that allows you to create that kind of culture where ideas are nurtured, developed, where productivity occurs, where innovation prevails, where growth happens. So the first principle in developing a growth culture is change versus stagnation. So if you want to develop a growth culture, you need an environment that embraces change versus an environment that is stagnant. This is a culture that is flexible, agile, adaptable, and evolving rather than stagnant. All right, so you want a business environment, no matter what stage your business is in, whether it's at startup, whether it's at profitability, break even, sustainability, scalability, or section, you want an environment that is flexible, agile, adaptable, that evolves versus stagnant. That kind of environment is an environment that honors and cultivates growth. The second thing you want you're gonna have a goal culture is innovation versus constant. Okay, you want uh, great ideas to be embraced. You want to be on the edge. Uh, you want an environment where that is um, oriented towards the future versus the past, right? It is a culture that is open to new ideas and constantly improving rather than holding on to, the, to past achievements. You know, many times as entrepreneurs, based on how long we've been in business, we tend to focus our attention on celebrating the past versus embracing an ever-changing future. So you want to make sure that your business, that your team are open to new ideas, that they're open to constant improvement rather than holding on to past achievements, right? Recognize and celebrate your past, but don't hold on to them because yesterday's ideas could be tomorrow's disaster. Number three, if you want to develop a growth culture, you want an environment that is risk oriented versus safe. Okay, you want an environment that is risk oriented. I was coaching a gal today who was trying to make a decision. Uh, she is a prolific anchor in a one of the big um, media cities in the country, in the United States of America. And she was considering whether to stay where she is because her station is about to be bought or whether to move back to the hometown where she got her first break, where she's loved, she's desired, and where she believes that uh, she could always go back to. And I asked her the question. I said, what are the chances that, you, that this new company, that buy your company, that they're going to renew your contract? She said, well, my contract is not due till 2020. And when it comes due for renewal, the chances are pretty strong because I am the face of, the, of our TV station, of our news our program. I said, so why are you worried? She said, because they may not. There's a chance they may there's a risk involved if I stay. And then I'm thinking, should I build a home and so forth and so on? Well, I know I always got a place back home. And I said to her, you're playing it safe. And no one ever realizes their full potentials are playing it safe. You can always go back home. But why go home without first trying? Take a risk. Take a risk. Yes, there's uncertainty, and there's certainty in is uncertainty anywhere. But at least you know that you would have given a good fight if you stay. So my suggestion to you: stay. You love the city you're in. You're in your prime. Write it out. Going back home will be taking the safe route, will be acting out of fear. 
As entrepreneurs, we're faced with similar situations where we got to take a risk or play it safe. This is a culture that embraces failure. In other words, you will not grow unless you accept that failure is part of the process. Now, there are dumb failures and there are smart failures. We're not saying all failure is good, but we're saying don't be so risk adverse that you do not reach out to your full potential. So this culture embraces failure, imperfections, and vulnerability. In other words, the edge of success is when we feel a little bit vulnerable. If you feel too safe, you might just be dying. You're in a danger zone. And this is a culture where we, we feel vulnerable. This is essential to growth, while safety and perfection stifles growth. Number four, you want a culture that embraces accountability versus rebellion. You see, it's one thing to take risk. Uh, it's one thing to desire innovation, right? Uh, it is one thing to embrace change. But with innovation and risk and change, if you have that without accountability, you may have a problem. It, you may shipwreck the business. So you need accountability to bring a check on how much risk we can take, how much change we'll allow, and how innovative we, we want to become. Because innovation can also be expensive. It's a culture that demands results and follows through on commitments rather than one that defies authority and is careless. In other words, it's, it's great to be innovative, it's wonderful to take risk, and it's awesome to change. But if, do we have a way to measure if that would yield to results? Or are we risking just to, for the fun of it? Are we changing for change's sake? And are we being innovative no matter the cost without making sure that we do it sustainably? So you want all those things, but you also want accountability. That is a growth culture. Number five, you also want a culture that embraces and nurtures humility versus pride. Humility versus pride. You see where there are risk takers, where there's change agents, where there's innovators. If you don't have accountability and humility, it can be very dangerous. So you need that to bring the balance in your business culture. The Bible teaches us that humble yourself under the mighty hands of God. He'll exalt us in due time. God honors, God rewards the, the humble, but he challenges he, the pride I led to defeat. The Bible says that pride comes before the fall. It's a culture that embraces submission and a recognition that one's limitations rather than one, I'm sorry, it's a culture that embraces submission and a recognition of one's limitation rather than one that is overly confident and self-absorbed. When a risk taker, an innovator, and a change agent doesn't have humility, he can become a casualty and lead others to casualty. So humility brings the balance. Again, you want a growth culture that is healthy, that is balanced. These are kind of the ingredients that you need in your soil if you want it to grow. Number six, a culture that is disciplined versus random, right? Because a disciplined culture is system-oriented, it's predictable, right? You might say, but Patrice, how do I become system-oriented, predictable, while at the same time being a risk taker, being a change agent, right? And being an innovator. Discipline is, becomes the underpinning of how you risk, becomes the things that governs how you approach change and the thing that guides how you innovate. Because if you risk randomly and change randomly and 
are innovative randomly, then you're scattered, unpredictable. And by the way, guess what? Not trustworthy. There's a character issue. This is a culture that is consistent, dependable, and systematic in the right habits rather than one that is scattered and inconsistent. Number seven, a growth culture is one that is hungry versus satisfied. You know, talking to the gal today that I was coaching about what decision to make. She had a choice, go back home, be satisfied, be content, take the path of least resistance or show how bad you want it. You're in a big city, in a big market. How hungry are you? You see, it is the hungriest lion in the jungle that would live to see the day. It is the hungriest animal in the jungle that will have enough drive to stay the course. But those who are satisfied, are careless, not precautious, make mistakes and become eaten, right? But are you hungry? How bad do you want it? Because if your business culture doesn't nurture this sense of hunger, this passion for, for more, this desire to succeed, this enthusiasm, for achievement, then it's not going to get there. Are you hungry? It's a culture that values personal drive and a desire for achievement rather than one that, is, that nurtures complacency and its satisfaction with the status quo. The Bible said that we have a hunger and thirst after righteousness, right? Nothing is wrong with being hungry and what's wrong is being driven, but you got to be hungry for the right things and be driven for the right thing. When two of the disciples came to Jesus in the book of, I believe, Luke of Mark, and I think it's actually in both passages, and when they came to him, one wanted to sit on the right hand, the other on the left hand. They wanted a position of leadership in Jesus' organization. Jesus did not chastise them for their ambition or their desire, the fact that they were hungry, but rather he chastised them for their worldview, why they were pursuing it and the way they was approaching it. It's good to be hungry because hungry people stay out there until they find food. Satisfied people. They don't, they give up easy, they give in because they don't have to. Is your team hungry? Are you hungry? Because if you are, you'll get up early, stay up late. If you are, you'll redeem the time. If you are, you will, no one will outwork you because of how hungry you are. Number eight, we're gonna develop a growth culture. We need a culture that is fun and not bored or full of boredom. Guys, here's the bottom line. People will continue to do that which they enjoy. Let me say it again. People will continue to do that which they enjoy. Do you have a fun culture? Do your people love coming to work? Do you love coming to work? Do you have a culture that 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 is enjoyable are people walking working in their gift set are they are they working in the air of passion do you break up up a bit do you allow your people to enjoy themselves even while they're being productive and being effective you need a fun culture it's a culture that values happiness joy and optimism rather than pessimism and sadness. A gentleman, having met the woman of his dreams, he was so excited about her that he asked her to marry her. One of the things he loved much about her was that she loved to watch football games with him. 
for those who are not Americans, American football. Or you can just I change the name to soccer. She loved to watch sports with him. And he loved that about her because all his other girlfriends weren't too excited about sport. And he just wanted a girl that wouldn't mind watching a good game with him. And then they got married. After the honeymoon, they were still happy. She was still showing up. And slowly, slowly, he began to notice that she would show up late when the game was on TV or leave early, you know, turn in early. That, and finally, he didn't see her anymore. You know, he would saw himself watching the games by himself. So one day he asked, he said, honey, we used to love watching the game together. You used to enjoy being right by my side. What happened? I've noticed that you've not been showing up. She looked at him. She said, honey, I never enjoyed it. She, she said, what? But I thought you loved it. She said, no, I did it because of you. It was not fun for me. I did it because of you. I said, well, I married you. He said, I married you because I thought you loved it. And of course, it was more than just that. But the point is, is that if people don't do that which they love, they will only do it when they have to. If they're doing that which they enjoy and having fun doing, even when they don't have to, they will still do it. How is your culture? Are your people having fun? Are you having fun? Do you enjoy this business you've chosen? Do you enjoy what you're doing? A business is too hard for it to be, feel like a job, something you have to go to. It's too hard, it's not worth it. Make sure you're doing that which you love, as Steve Jobs pointed out. He said, do what you love, because that's where you'll find success. That's where you'll find wealth. So a growth culture, it's a culture that is fun, it's a culture that's not just fun, but it's a culture that is hungry. They want it bad enough. It's a culture that is disciplined. It's a culture that is humble. It's a culture that is accountable. It's a culture that is risk taking. It's a culture that is accountable, risk taking. And it's a culture that is innovative. And lastly, it's a culture that embraces change. So here's a question. How active are these things in your business? Do you have this kind of culture? I have a little exam for you, a little test for you. I want you to rate yourself among these things from one to five. Let's see how how healthy your culture, how much poise for growth is your culture. First, do you embrace change rather than stagnation? Rate yourself from one to five. By the way, if you, you may want this PowerPoint, uh, after the seminar, you're gonna get an evaluation form. If you fill that evaluation form and, 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 and get, let, let us know your feelings about the seminar and how ways we can serve you, you will receive this PowerPoint free of charge. You'll, you'll get it uh, as a gift to you, as a thank you for being part of this seminar. All right, so if you want this PowerPoint, you'll get it so you can do this yourself. Uh, do you welcome new ideas and ongoing improvements? Do you accept failure as a learning process? Do you demand results and hold the, the people that you were with accountable when they do not follow through? Do you recognize God's sovereignty and contribution and the contribution of others in your achievements? Do you value consistency and dependability? Do you honor and reward personal drive and a desire for achievement? So rate yourself between one to five and let us know how you feel about each of these things. And lastly, do you value fun and personal fulfillment? How well are you doing? And my next question to you for your final exam is which area do you need to work on the most to enhance uh, your, your, your business culture? All right, among the area that I just shared with you, which area do you need to work on to make your business culture better? 
all right? Again, if you fill out the evaluation form that you received, you should have gotten it by now, just fill it out and you'll be able to, uh, to, to, to uh, get this PowerPoint that allows you to go ahead and work with and have internal with, with your team. Let me tell you about biblical entrepreneurship. If you design for us to work with you, to walk, to walk out the thing I just shared with you, or to help improve your business, uh, we have a, a biblical entrepreneurship program that helps you grow your business with impact using a proven system that we've been using for the last 20 years. Thousands of entrepreneurs around the world have used this system to align their business with their values, increase their top and bottom line while making a kingdom impact. So this program is, we have some classes coming up, a, a what we call the Biblical Entrepreneurship Executive Program. It's a 68 hour training and coaching experience, working with uh, a, an experienced coach and certified teacher who have worked with other businesses like yours, no matter what stage they were, in helping them uh, grow their businesses or start new ones. Uh, we, we can only take 16 entrepreneurs in this program at a time. So consider joining us so you can get the, the assistance you need. And that program, it's, um, it includes a emphasis on principles, growing your business in biblical truth. Some of the topic covers are things like identifying opportunity for growing your business, taking calculated risk, how do you mitigate risk, biblical profit, and many others. You can also, there are not, another component is practices, which is the, looking at the best business practices for efficiency and growth. Things such as biblical economics, marketing and sales from a biblical approach, innovation. I will deal with how to how use innovation to build your competitive edge, biblical management, how to create a serving leadership culture and others. And then planning, which is where you develop a growth plan to align your vision, your values, and your goals with kingdom impact. You'll deal with business finance. How do you finance your business if you need it now or later? How do you develop a succession and exit strategy? And how do you develop a kingdom business plan and so many others? So these are some of the things you will cover in that training. But um, we have a special for you today. So um, this training is for three months online and live combination or eight months online. But if you're not sure yet, if you want to take that leap for this particular training, I have, I have a special for you today. We have what we call the Biblical Entrepreneurship Experience. The Biblical Entrepreneurship Experience is an opportunity for you to experience a smaller version of this training. So you can really see if that's something for you. That's the kind of training that will help you with your business before you make the leap. The training costs a total of about uh, $3,700, but the experience only costs you about $300 for you to kind of get a taste of it, help with your business, and then see if you need to, um, to really invest in the course. So the biblical entrepreneurship experience is eight hours where you go through principles, practice planning, growing your business, biblical truth, business practice, practice efficiency and growth, and then looking at a growth plan that aligns your mission, values, and goals with the kind of impact. In a sense, it's an eight hour version of the total course that you walk with something deliverable. And then from there you can decide, do I need to invest in, in for the full time for the course time and and money so let me tell you where some of these experiences are happening we have one in portland in may 1st from 9 to 5 p.m if you're in the portland area i want to fly in we have one online complete online you can plug in from anywhere around the world uh, from uh Ju june 6 uh through july 11th it'll be one hour and a half a week uh every wednesday 7 to 8 30 right for five weeks where you can get the experience or you can take it in orlando if that's the place where you're in august 17th you can take it in orlando from nine to five uh or we're going to have it in dc washington dc area saturday september 8th you can also take advantage of it there again eight hour experience of be to allow you to get help with your business moving from where you are to where you want to be but more important get the full taste of what biblical country is all about so that you can determine if you want to make the full investment. Well, I promise you a special, I'm gonna give it to you, to you now. Until midnight tonight, if you want to sign up for the Biblical Entrepreneurship Experience, we have a special for you. The regular price is $299. If you sign up, the early bird price is $249. So you sign up today uh, or during the early bird season, you get it only for $249. But here's the bonus. <clears throat> 
if you sign up today before midnight Easter standard, you will get a copy of the free kingdom business life cycle guide. All right, you'll get it immediately. That's the guide that goes over the business life cycle and goes over the different points that deals with each of the stages. So if you want that life cycle to see where your business is, what stage your business is, I encourage you to sign up tonight by midnight Easter Standard Time in the United States, where for only $249, you get an eight-hour BE experience where you can use that to help your business where it is. And, and at the end of the eight hours, you can determine if you want to invest more into the entire biblical entrepreneur program. Some have taken just that and found it to be satisfactory for now. You may want more after that, it's up to you. But we wanna invite you and encourage you to join any of those uh, courses that I just shared. You'll see if you don't know where you wanna go, I try it online. By the way, if you can, you can sign at one location and switch to another location as long as you do it before the location date. All right. Could you please do me a favor before you leave? Um, when you get an email, from us today, you probably should have gotten already, you're gonna have this evaluation form. Please fill it out for us. Uh, put your name and contact, and let us know what stage your business is, because we wanna understand who, we, who, we are, who you are and how we can serve you should we connect with you further. Let us know your annual revenue, and let us know how the seminar was for you. We're gonna do the seminar on a monthly basis uh, to help with your business. We'll let us know how, whether it was helpful um and give us any thoughts about how the seminar was for you and lastly let us know how we can serve you we want to serve you if you want to know about other seminars we're going to have uh, we have another one in april i uh, just check that we'll keep you informed of the other seminar if you're interested in one the experience check that you may not be able to register today but you might be willing to register at a later date that's fine just check that and we'll be able to follow up with you if you're interested in the entire biblical entrepreneurship program, you want to go through a three month course or the eight month course online, check that and we'll be able to get in touch with you. Uh, if you're interested in kingdom business coaching, you want us to come alongside you and talk about how we can coach your business, moving you from one stage to the other, you have that as well. Or you may want to, you may not receive our weekly news and devotional, and you may want to receive that. If you check that, we'll make sure we follow with you. Lastly, um, you may want to refer a friend to this training. If you want to do that, check that, and uh, we'll make sure that we connect with you so that we're able to, uh, to have you uh, connect and let us know how you want us to serve you and your friend. Well, I hope you enjoyed this seminar, and I look forward to seeing you in one of the classes. Please fill out the evaluation form and let us know how we can serve you. But until we meet again, here's my prayer for you. May the Lord give you the grace and favor to build that kingdom business that he's called you to build so that one day you can hear those wonderful words, good and faithful servant. You've been faithful over a few things. God will make you rule over much. God bless you. And I look forward to connecting with you on the classes or at the next seminar. Thank you so much for your time.